What is up you guys, Pete DiCarlo here, and today we're gonna talk about BYND or Beyond Meat. If you guys don't know, the stock has fallen over 20% today, and a lot of people are asking me, what do I think of Beyond Meat as a long-term investment? What are some problems that I have with the company? Do I see them eventually becoming this worldwide brand and more people moving over to actually eating meat alternatives? Or do I just see this being another fad such as the ketogenic diet, the Atkins diet, and paleo? In this video, we're gonna go over all of that and if I think BYND is a good buy here. But before we get started, hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. It really means a lot to me and it's a great way to support small YouTubers like myself so that I can continue to put out more and more videos for you guys. So let's get started. Beyond Meat is an LA based producer of meat substitutes that was launched in 2012. They have a market cap currently of $7.8 billion, no dividend and a negative EPS of 8 cents. So as of right now, the company is not profitable. Since its IPO, BYND has been on every investor's radar from big gigantic hedge funds, whales, even down to your Robinhood retail investors. And with this whole new culture of meat substitutes and healthier style of living, many people think that BYND and these meat substitutes are here to stay and could take up a huge market share when it comes to the meat industry. However, there are many questions that investors should ask themselves, such as are there substitutes actually a healthier option? How can their prices become more competitive? Because as of right now, they are nowhere near competitive, but we'll get into that later. Will this just be another fade such as keto, Atkins diet, paleo, and most of all, how can this company scale? And once again, their stock just crashed 20% today. So let's start actually unpacking all of this. And I wanna run this video down into three separate sections. Number one, products that they have and their competition because there is another competitive player within this space. Number two is going to be financials and fundamentals of the company. And number three is going to be their scalability and potential profitability. Beyond Meat makes plant-based alternatives to your average meat food products. They have things like ground beef, different types of sausages, burgers, which are really good. I was a vegan for two years, so I actually know a lot about this company and I know a lot about their products and most of them actually taste pretty good. They also make chicken strips, taco meat, and a ton of other different things. They do have a pretty big competitor in a company called Impossible Foods. Now, Impossible Foods also makes the same types of food as Beyond Meat, but, but they're sticking more with like ground beef, burger patties, and different types of sausages just from what I've seen on their website. Now I know that Impossible Foods is trying to partner with some other big companies out there. And Beyond Meat is doing that as well. Impossible actually reached a deal with Disney to bring their products to their theme parks around the United States, as well as some other fast food restaurants. However, Beyond Meat has actually teamed up with Dunkin' Donuts. If you've ever had the Beyond Meat, I think their sausage patties they have in one of their breakfast sandwiches, they're actually pretty good from what I hear. And as well, one of the bigger ones that they're talking about right now, and this kind of leads into why the stock is down 20% today, is a potential deal with McDonald's which from a consumer standpoint I don't know if that's the best because a lot of the people who currently eat Beyond Meat's products think that it's a healthier alternative and let's be honest anything that is sold at McDonald's is not healthy and kind of you know ruins in my personal opinion the reputation of whatever Beyond Meat is going to be selling at their stores. From an investor standpoint and a business standpoint, it does make a lot of sense, considering the fact that McDonald's is one of the biggest fast food and just restaurant chains within America. Now, the big, now another big differential between Beyond Meat and Impossible is that Beyond Meat is actually a publicly traded company. We kind of see the same thing with FanDuel and DraftKings. I just made a video on that last week. If you want to invest in meat alternatives on the public stock market, BYND is really your only full option. There are other companies out there that are also trying to go up against Beyond Meat, such as Tyson Foods and Purdue. But in my opinion, while they have a superior manufacturing chain and as well more money to spend on marketing dollars, both of those brands really, I don't think people trust. As somebody who was a vegan, I I'm not anymore, and someone who is health conscious, I do not trust brands like Purdue and Tyson. They are both known for putting out poor quality products for literally like pennies on the dollar. And I think that the healthy market of people who are currently buying the Beyond Meat products and will be buying Beyond Meat products in the future are not going to go 
towards those types of companies. But now let's go over the financials because these are important. Currently right now, like I said, Beyond Meat has a $7.8 billion market cap, 62.4 million shares outstanding, a negative EPS of 8 cents, a PE ratio of zero, no annual dividend, and they're in the middle of their 52 week range. We look at their income statement over the past four years. In 2016, they did $16.8 million in sales, in 2016, they did roughly $16 million in sales, 2017, $32.5 million in sales, 2018, almost $88 million in sales, and 2019, $297 million in sales. So you can see there is huge growth within this company. They are not only doubling, but almost tripling their revenue year over year, which shows that there are people out there who want to buy this product. And not only that, the people who started buying this product are continuing to buy the product. Something that you really want to see with any company is that not only is the revenue growing, but the net operating income is growing because it doesn't matter if you're making more and more money, if you're just blowing more and more money. So if we look at 2016, the company operated at a loss of $25 million. 2017, a loss of $30 million, 2018, a loss of almost $30 million, and in 2019, a loss of $12 million, which is huge because they tripled revenue from 2018 to 2019, yet they actually cut their net income losses in half, which is a great sign. Taking a look at the balance sheet, you can see that they currently have $451 million in total assets and $67 million in total liabilities, which is something that I really like to see. Usually I like to see a two to one ratio, but in this case, we have almost a seven to one ratio. Now remember the company is actually not profitable so I would be way more impressed however if the company was more profitable and they had a balance sheet that was looking like this. Now that we've skimmed over the financials let's talk about why the stock dumped over 20%. Number one Earnings really weren't that good, but it was one specific thing that was said during the earnings call that really made the stock sell off pretty heavy today. And as you can see, as of right now, the stock is actually down 12%, but was down at lows of around 21% earlier today. So let's get into it. McDonald's McPlant announcement spooked Beyond Meat investors, says analysts. Beyond Meat has said it's going to be a supplier for the McDonald's forthcoming meat-free line called the McPlant. That is not a good name in my opinion. But McDonald's has actually declined to comment on the identity of its future suppliers, sparking confusion among investors. JP Morgan analyst Ken Goldman told the CEO of Beyond Meat on the company's earnings call that he thought Brown was spooking people a little bit because he said he wasn't going to give investors any substantial details on the deal and you can't do that you can't come out on an earnings call and say you know we have this huge deal with mcdonald's it's called the mcplant we are going to be their supplier for you know all of their meat alternatives and then not give any details on the actual deal and then have mcdonald's not comment on the deal not only is that just not right? But it shows a poor lack of, I don't wanna say leadership because from what I've seen, Ethan Brown has done a great job with this company, but it shows irresponsibility in my personal opinion. And so as of right now, that is why the shares are selling off. Now, if they do get this deal going with McDonald's, I do think this could be huge. And we're gonna go into that now because this is when we're gonna start talking about scalability and profitability. So in order for Beyond Meat to become this food giant that a lot of investors plan for them to be, they have to scale. This can no longer just be a company where vegans and the healthy and the wealthy eat this types of product because as you'll see in a bit, th this is so expensive. Like in order for them to scale, they're gonna have to lower their prices. So let's just kind of get into it now. Just looking at their burger patties, which is kind of their flagship product. The cheapest I could find them was on target.com and they're selling for $6 for two eight ounce burger patties. This is prices them at $12 a pound, which is just dumb. Like it's, it is, it is very expensive. And I understand that if you are somebody who wants to eat this product, power to you. If you have the money to spend, that's great, but they're not gonna be able to scale at that price point. So for this price, you could get three pounds of just crappy beef, which I really wouldn't you know, recommend doing that. It's really not healthy for you. It's full of hormones as, you know, as well as really not good for the sustainability reasons but we're not going to get into that in this video or you can get two pounds of grass fed grass finished ground beef at like costco or giant or you can even get a pound or more of like wagyu beef or kobe beef which 
both of those, in my opinion, taste a lot better and are better for you. So in order to actually scale from the grocery store level, they need to become more competitive and a price point I think that they have to get to is $6 per pound. Right now they're at $12 per pound. So getting there is going to be very hard, but if they can do that in the next like five or six years, they really could begin to scale because the thing is like, $12 a pound is very, very expensive. If they could even get to $6 a pound, yes, that's double what the crappy, nasty beef in the grocery store is, you know, selling for, but at least it's competitive with the more grass fed and organic ground beef and chicken. Now, one thing that not a lot of people might actually realize is that most meat substitutes are not healthy for you. A lot of people watch these vegan propaganda videos and movies on Netflix, then they become vegan or vegetarian, they start eating all these meat substitutes and most of them are not healthy. A lot of them are full of soy, which soy is not good because it raises your estrogen levels and estrogen levels in men is obviously not good and estrogen levels in women scientifically is not good either. As well, a lot of them have some hydrogenated oils and a lot of oil that is really not good for you because when you have a meat substituted product, it is always going to be more processed. And usually the more you process your food, the worse it is for you from a health standpoint. Now, one thing I will say from Beyond Meat, because like I said before, I was a vegan for a couple of years, so I did a lot of research into this. Most of Beyond Meat's products are made with a pea protein isolate, which pea protein isolate is expensive, but it's one of the more healthy options when it comes to meat alternatives. As far as the health of the product and the taste of the product, I think all of their products taste very good. Um, I think that the, you know, the health aspect of it is pretty decent compared to a lot of their competitors, but that's why it's going to be more expensive. They could make a more competitive product for that $6 price point, like I said earlier, but it's gonna be worse ingredients for the consumer, which I think the integrity of, you know, Beyond Meat, they don't wanna do that. And I, and I really respect that within the company. Now, the second aspect of scalability is going to be getting the product into the hands of as much people as they possibly can through doing partnerships with other companies. Say that you're in the grocery store and you've never had a meat substitute before and you really don't care. What are the chances of you just picking up Beyond Meat because it's on sale or something, right? Extremely low. However, if you're out at a theme park, if you're at Dunkin' Donuts, if you're at a fast food restaurant or just a food chain in general and you see this potential healthier option on their menu, you might go ahead and try it when you're at a restaurant or out somewhere with your friends. The point is that you try it at the restaurant and then next time you see it in the grocery store, you pick it up, it's on sale and you bring it home and you cook it. I'll tell you during this world health crisis that we've had over the past couple of months, we had that huge meat shortage. There was no meat shortage at all when it came to Beyond Meat. Like there really wasn't. I, I remember all of the freezers in all the grocery stores near me were bare completely bare and there were still stacks of like Beyond Meat burgers and ground beef. Because if you haven't had it somewhere else, you're probably not gonna just buy it at your local grocery store for the hell of it. So they need to position themselves with other companies and restaurant chains in order to get the product out to other people. Now, you know, partnering potentially with McDonald's, like I said earlier, could be huge for this company, but I think it could also potentially be a detriment as far as the health conscious standpoint that they're trying to make. However, I will say, and this is bad because I usually eat McDonald's like once every three years, Every time I go to McDonald's, they do have, you know, healthier options now more and more. And I think that going into the next 10, 20 years, a lot of these fast food restaurants are realizing like they're not going to be able to sell the same stuff they sold 20, 30 years ago to our parents because we are a much more health conscious generation. And so they're going to have to pivot their business model to actually stay a fast food company and what they've been built on, but offer much healthier alternatives. So this could be really big for Beyond Meat. Let me know what you guys think. Hit the like button, comment down below. Let me know. Are you guys purchasing Beyond Meat? Do you think that this is something that is going to be huge in the next 10, 20, 30 years? Or do you think that this is just another fad like we've seen with all these other different types of diets and, and everything else that we've seen throughout the fitness and health industry over the past 100 years? I wanna hear from you guys. It helps me make better videos. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace.